Directing question to the sponsor of the bill. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Leader Mumpower. I guess my question about this is, uh, is every position in the Comptroller's office statutorily defined? I guess I'm, I'm wondering, uh, the Comptroller has a great deal of discretion in managing the agency. And if there's a position there that is going to be transferred to perform new uh, responsibilities in this area, which is an important area, I'm wondering why we need to change the law for that to take place. Uh, it would seem to me that the Comptroller does have the ability to, um, to, to deal with the mission of that, con uh, of that office under the statutory definition of its responsibilities. And I, I don't see anything in this legislation that, that would, um, uh, it would be necessary. I, I, I'm trying to figure out why we're doing this. Well, thank you. The reason that we're doing this, or the reason that any bill is before us, is because a representative and a senator feel like it's a good idea. And I feel like it's a good idea for small business people to have an advocate within state government to help them pour through the bureaucracy sometimes that they feel forced upon them. Like, for example, let's say the flooding issue. There's a lot of small business people who have suffered as a result of some of the flooding issues. They're having to pour through sometimes, you know, we have regulations and rules in place and they might never have had to deal with state government, but in helping overcome some of the things they've had to face, they need someone that, that they know they can call and have as a resource to help them with different branches of government. That would be the small business advocate. Um, you know, I hate the current, current comptroller isn't here. I think the former one may be around, but uh, as to whether or not uh, every position is statutorily defined, I think not. But um, I think this is a good way for the legislature to express that we care very much about small business. One out of every two jobs created in the state of Tennessee is created in a small business. And this would just give small business people an advocate within state government. Mr. Chairman, I you recognize. if I could just respond. I Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I didn't make my point clear. I don't disagree with the role that this um, this position, um, the, the 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 activity it would engage in. I'm not I'm not concerned about that. I just think it's a terrible precedent when we start looking at an agency and statutorily defining employees within that agency. I think the, the comptroller has the prerogative to do this now, and I would encourage uh, the comptroller to do that. And I'm not sure there's anybody on this committee that would not encourage the comptroller to do that, especially if the comptroller has a position that is available now uh, that can be moved into this position. I just don't, I'm, I'm concerned about establishing the precedent where we're going to pass a law every time we want to create a new position in one of our constitutional officer uh, uh, offices. Thank you, and I understand that. I would tell you, I think the precedent's already set. For example, a couple of years ago, we created the Office of Open Records Ombudsman. Uh, that is an example of something we've already done within a constitutional office. We created again. We've created other positions, but I've just named one. So the precedent's already there. I, I definitely understand your concern and appreciate it. But this is not establishing a precedent. It's simply following a precedent that's already been set and um, creates at the same time a, a friend for small business. Representative Turner. Will the sponsor you? Certainly. Uh, Jason, I want to apologize. I didn't. I kind of got on the tail end of this, but uh, you're wanting to strip all these amendments off. Is that, is that what they haven't been put on. But you're you're objecting to. Them. Well, the sponsor of the amendments is not here, and he and I had talked about what his goal was, and I know he was looking at several different vehicles to accomplish his goal, and I think the goal that was being talked about had has been has been adopted on the. Uh, omnibus bill 
Now, as to the fate of the omnibus bill, I don't know. And if that bill doesn't move forward, I'm happy to talk about this again when the sponsor of the amendments hopefully is back with us before this would get up to the floor. Uh, but I would not want any, to do anything that would raise the fiscal note on this or anything, endanger this bill in order to accomplish a different goal that can already be accomplished somewhere else. Do we know what the fiscal note on these amendments would be? I don't. You know, I don't know if the sponsor got a fiscal note from the Office of Fiscal Review or not. Mr. Chairman, can I ask, do we have a fiscal note on, on this, this, this amendment? Yes, we're checking that right now. You know, well, I, you know, we, Representative Miller on the House floor, the other day made a presentation to us showing the disparity in in, in government contracts to minorities and, and women, and it was you know of of, of billions of dollars. They, they less than two percent went to uh, minorities and women. Uh, I think that we've not done a very good job, and I think that 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 report showed that we've not done a very good job. And making sure that that, that our, our state contracts that that, that women and, and minorities are represented, and in doing business with the state, and I think that's Representative Miller's intent to to put these amendments on there. Now, as the, far the omnibus omnibus bill is, I, I'm not sure exactly where it is. I'm on, I'm on, I'm wanting to move it forward here tonight, but I've been told it's not going anywhere in the Senate. So uh, that's that's the status we're in right now. So. Uh, I know Representative Miller's worked a long, hard time on these. What are, what's our position if he's not here? What do we do, Mr. Chairman? Well, the, the amendments, first let me ask the que yes, ask question about the, the uh, fiscal note. The, there are uh, seven amendments that are proposed. Um, I, amendments A through F do not have a fiscal impact. Amendment G has a fiscal impact of increasing state expenditures by $18,000, and I would believe... Amendment G was really the amendment that was desired. And I would believe that uh, fiscal right. note would um, uh, be uh, because of uh, the attendance bill. of annual training. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to sign on as, 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 as the sponsor of Amendment G, if I could. Well, I tell you what. Let's roll this. Uh, let's let's roll this bill uh, to a spot uh, further down the calendar. Well, we we can get these the sponsor and the uh, proposed uh, uh, signers on of the amendments can uh, get together and see where we are on this. Mr. Chairman, I would like uh, perhaps before we while we're doing that, I would like to put the call out to hear from someone from the Department of Economic Community Development, which already funds a full time office on the issue of my small and minority business affairs to talk to us about why they haven't done anything to address the problem that the sponsors of the amendment are concerned about since that is their full-time job already to deal with minority business well, and, I, I and, and this bill I appreciate it but I don't want this bill to be I have worked long and hard on this bill and I don't want it to be don't want it to fail because of the addition of a fiscal note at the last minute especially when the issue addressed has already been amended into another bill that's my only concern I'm not. Uh, I'm not against the spirit of the amendment at all, but I don't want it to to kill this bill. Well, I understand that when it's uh, when there are other vehicles out there. I'm sorry. We'll roll it down and get get an answer. Be fine. We will roll this until the sponsor and the, the and the proponents of the amendment indicate that they're ready or uh, at, at taking a, another uh, track on this particular bill. We'll roll House Bill 2885. Without objection. Thank you.